Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Hand of Fate 2. In the previous episode, we started our journey to help free the fates from the Black Knight. We had a little bit of a tricky moment when we lost our grifter's companion, but we managed to get him back, using the fates very game against them. Not that I'd really want to use them it against them. Not the point. Okay, definitely want to try to get that one, so let's see, what is the highest? Eight. Definitely don't want that. Ooh, and I end up getting the second highest. No matter. I can afford to pay two. Because, if I play this right, I might be able to get the 50 shards before the end of this climb. What do we got? Burning building? No. No. I'll definitely take the arm wrestling. Just get rid of this one. Which, actually, probably would have been good to have that. But, no matter. Let's see. Brass hag. Touts herself as a fearsome pirate, but needs the money from this competition to get herself a boat. Yeah, I don't think I've ever gone beyond the third round in this game. But it seems like I will today. Get a fate shard and a nice pile of 30 gold. You take your award from the purser on the way out the tavern. When you return, you will compete in the next round for a larger prize. Another fate's whim. Huh. Ooh. I could use this to get the old maiden's token. Ugh, but there's a lot of good stuff here. Ah, screw what the old maiden's token is worth it. I still have one more set of stairs I can climb. Well, after this. Hey, what extends her hand? Yes, yes. Here we are. See, she stops to greet you. For centuries I have helped the mortals who find themselves lost in my forest, but not once has one helped me. You have something I desire. Give it to me, and in exchange I will offer you something no mortal has ever beheld. This is what you need the Potion of Youth for. She pours the entire contents of the vial into her mouth. And we get the Maiden Platinum card, which was a very popular card in Hand of Fate. Unfortunately, she no longer can bless you, but she can still give you longer life, gold, and food, and in this case, even better than in her previous form. Within moments, the potions, potion takes effect. The old woman transforms into a youthful maiden, I thank you for your generosity, mortal. Now I may continue helping your kind for centuries more. Please, take my offering. Elven Ring, at the beginning of every new map... Ah, their days came and went. The world has left them behind. At the beginning of every new map, draw one blessing card. If you have two plus blessing, choose one to discard. Can be very useful. And you can actually get that again by repeating the process, but with the Maiden Platinum card. Now tell me, what is it you seek? Hmm, I'm good on gold. I'll take some supplies. This should bring you great nourishment and sustain you for several days, she says with a twinkle in her eye. Ah, fate's favor. I don't know, this one? Yes! Five fate shards. Good chunk. And apparently I got them double. I think that might be a glitch, but I'm not going to complain. Alright, let's get rid of the eight food. And try to get the lowest possible score. Which we got. Thank you. 
Yeah, I can afford to give up one food. Let's hope I can get four more shards from this. I mean, that's one. A win here sets the tone for your challenge. Now nah, we're not gonna get enough. A shame. But I can still do the follow the goblin quest. Which will get us Goblins, another platinum they card. They naught but trouble. Were it in my hands, I would never deal with them. You spy a goblin, half hidden in a copse of trees. Counting the gold weighing down his sack. Startled by your presence, he beats a hasty retreat through a magical portal. You tell Malacalypse to stay behind before pursuing the goblin through the portal. And essentially it's a series of traps that get more and more difficult. But you can also gain a bunch of food and gold from this. Excuse me if I don't talk. I kind of need a bit of concentration to deal with some of the more dangerous traps. I'm not 100% certain, but I think with those spinning wheels, or spinning death traps, you only get hurt by the blade inside. Though I'm not 100% sure on that, and I don't want to test it. You exit through the glowing door and find yourself in more or less the same place as before. Malocalypse waves at you from a few steps away, surprised and bemused. The crunching of leaves underfoot betrays the goblin running further into the forest. And now we gotta do this a few more times. If you follow him, he may lead you to the goblin treasure hordes of legend. You don't believe me, I intend to follow him. The goblin turns to see you still in pursuit. He shouts in exasperation. Leave me be, meddling human. The mournful blare of his horn echoes through the forest. Another portal yawns before you, the goblin nowhere in sight. You find yourself face down in a pile of leaves, being shaken awake by Malacalypse. Slightly dazed, you hear the jangle of coins in the distance. Not that way. 
catch up to the goblin just as he leaps into another portal. His face contorts into a look of irrita that, 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 irritated disbelief as your eyes meet. What, did you think I was going to give up that easily? so I can confirm. Running into the non-belated side doesn't hurt again. Portal deposits you directly in the path of an oblivious malacolypse, bowling him over. As you pick yourself up off the ground, you spy the elusive goblin escaping over a hill. I believe this may be the last one. But who knows. Whoops. Sorry guys, you can pause the video if you want to see what it said. I missed it too. When you emerge from the portal, you find yourself in a luxurious sitting room. Green lanterns cast uneasy shadows on the walls. Lying exhausted on a woven rug in the center of the room is the goblin. He sighs at your appearance. My, you are persistent. I'd offer you some murk tea if you hadn't just pursued me relentlessly and barged unwelcome into my home. Where are we? His face cracks into a mischievous grin. You are in Goblin Town, human, where the sky is made of stone and the roast lizard is the best in the Empire. He gestures at the window and your jaw drops. The sky is indeed made of stone. The city waiting beyond has been carved into a vast cavern. The street below is host to a market lit by the uneasy green lanterns. Goblins and hooded figures peruse the wares, giving wide berth to giant rodent-like beasts of burden. You swear you see a lone Empire soldier before she disappears into the crowd. Demand the gold. He tips the sack of gold towards you. The goblin's face crinkles sadly. Take it. As you grab hold of the sack, his horn he blows his horn, opening a portal at your feet. Next time you want to reach Goblin Town, consider using a more conventional entrance. He gives you a half-hearted wave. Yeah, I'd Nicely do that. Done. If I knew what the uh, more conventional entrance was. Alright, I'm going to hit up the camp. One, see if I can trade for anything. Ooh, it could be good. Better than my tunic. You may take their garb, but hopefully not their ideas. And I'm going to heal up. Whoops. 
want to buy food. Got plenty. Unfortunately, we've got nothing else to gain in terms of shards. Take the third step. The knight gestures and you feel a strange tingling in your fingertips. Gremlins. The accursed mage granted his knight many methods to inhibit your efforts. This curse will be drawn before the final encounter. Well, that's not so bad. Gremlins just causes you to lose equipment whenever you gain a uh, curse. Huge failure is considered failure in precision gambits useful. Ah, perfect. Maybe they fight for freedom, blah blah blah. Ah, let's see. I think I'll remove the silencer of greed. And you know what? I'm gonna go for the General of Steel, because it's going to be just him. And I'd rather fight one powerful target than four several targets. Or four weaker targets. And get rid of the 30 seconds, because well, even I'm not confident enough to beat them in 30 seconds. Oh dear. <laughs> Move faster next time. What do you mean? I did perfectly. Get that one though. Wow, I actually could have done it in 30 seconds. So there's Fate's Finale, but I know for a fact that Mal's quest is somewhere in here. Here we see yet another wheel, each different, yet each bearing their own similarities. Or I could just get it here. Which I intend to do. By the way, guys, I, I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think. I'm thinking of just doing dedicated videos to each character's companion quests. Minus Malacalypse, because after this one, there's just one card left for his companion quest. Let me know what you guys think of that. <laughs> they say madness can be a blessing. Not I, however. I would never be so thoughtless. Sure you wouldn't. The journey comes with some confusion regarding logistics and food. What do children even eat, Malacalypse had cried. Food. They eat food. In the end, you manage to bring the mage children safely to the madmen near Frostboard. Their home is an ominous building with high gates, barred windows, and faint screaming coming from within. It passes as an asylum disquietingly well. Right, we'll just drop these little munchkins off and be on our way to get that current cure. Malacalypse leads your ragtag bunch to the main door before turning to you and saying seriously, Please, perform the secret knock. It doesn't matter what you select. Wrong! Then he merely pushes, op pushes open the unlocked doors. You are met by two tall men, identical twins, dressed in patterned nightgowns. Ira of the Vale told us you'd be coming, one of the twins says. I'm Barry, and this is Mary. They call us the Mad Men, but it is only a name. They shove you aside and hurry the children indoors. We're good sorts, aren't we, Barry? His twin nods and he brushes the children's hair and hands them nightgowns. Yes, indeed, but sometimes I forget we're merely acting and I do mad things like setting that farm on fire. Keeps the rabble off our trail, though, don't it? Barry nods as he brings out a plate of warm spiced breads. 
As the children warily set down to eat, the, to eat spiced breads and butter, Mary asks you a favor. We will need your help clearing out the place. It hasn't been an orphanage for a long time, has it? Not fit for, fit for children. The monster is in the burning room, Mary. Well, first things first, let's extinguish the burning room. As you approach the stairs, a man in rags rushes past and barrels into an adjacent room. He peers out at you with mad eyes. That'd be Frida, Mary says behind you. He, keep, he kept trying to climb Frostbird's clock tower, so they sent him here. He's harmless. Frida slams the door, then open, then closed again. You arrive at the burning room. The room is literally on fire. Everything has been reduced to ash inside. Somehow, magic is keeping the fire contained. Well, Mal, what have you got for us? And the mage shrugs. Perhaps that's the answer? He points to a chubby lizard-like creature the size of a small dog. It watches you cautiously from the corner of the room. A fire salamander. A hatchling at that. I'd have thought them long extinct. Well, let's try to placate the flame creature. Oh, joy. Oh. Thank you, Imperial Armor. You coo and offer cake to the fat little lizard. Intrigued, it waddles over to the doorframe, licking its lips. You notice the flames recede as it approach. Lizards even have lips? The fires have been extinguished, but the room continues to smoke and smolder. With the, with the salamander calm, the flames recede and the room becomes cool enough to enter. The chubby creature clambers up your leg, snuggles into your arms, gibbering softly to itself. The, the little beast gags and convulses in your arms until, with a tiny squawk, it coughs up an item that drops painfully onto your toe. Ouch. Sisters of Vengeance. I find almost every motivation suspect, except revenge. Revenge I understand intimately. Yeah, not going to be too much help against the Black Knight. On the advice of Malacalypse, those little ones are prone to spontaneous combustion, you release the little creature outside. Or those ones. It gives you our palm a warm little lick before it patters away to the cliffs nearby. With that dealt with, you return to the kitchen. Mary boils sheets in a massive steel vat while his brother prepares radishes for the stew. Hopefully not in the same vat. Their tummies full of warm bread, the children find comfortable spots around the kitchen to nap. Time to kill the monster. Barry leads you down to the cellar door. It's in there. I've had to resort to going downtown to buy our pickled vegetables. They scream like banshees when I ask them what blood they've pickled them in, though. Barry closes the door behind you. You follow the steps deep beneath the fortress until you find yourself in an underground cave. You hear a guttural moan. Just a terror of blight? I can handle that. You poke at the dead thing to see if it holds any treasure, but find nothing of value. Malacolypse rubs his shoulder nervously as he gazes into the creature's cold, dead eyes. One step closer to a cure, perhaps. Hmm. If it is as they say, my interest is piqued. With the problems resolved, the madmen insist you stay for supper. Seated on opposite ends of a comically long dining table, you shout conversation at each other. Apocalypse takes quickly and jovially to the shouting. How do you know Mal? Yes, Malocalypse stole some scrolls from the orphanage once. The bard chokes into his bowl. The madman seemed nonchalant about the transgression. You are just a boy, but it doesn't make it right. We'd like those scrolls back sometime. Okay, what's their opinion? General Calamity, isn't it, Barry? Barry shouts as he hands out hunks of bread. Barry nods. I wouldn't think they were so bad if only they didn't try to kill all us magic folk. Not to mention what they did to those poor lizard men. 
I remember when my silk trader was a lizard man. Now they're all dead, except for the bloke hiding in the city. Weren't... Weren't the lizard men wiped out centuries ago? Barry scratches his crooked nose. At least you think he did. He's so very far away. Yes, it has been a while, hasn't it? You yell across the table that the stew is delicious. What? Mary shouts back. She says there's too much carrot in the stew, Malacalypse joins in. The madmen look at each other confused. No, we can't marry you. Yes, I will marry you, Malacalypse replies. He reaches for his loot. It's real armskirk wood. Thank you for noticing. With the problem's resolved, the madmen insist you stay for supper. Now let's finish eating. As you finish your stew, Malacalypse brings out his loot. After the second song, the madmen politely suggest that it's time for you two to leave. The children giggle at the bard's silent indignation. With the mage children peering out behind them, madmen near Frostbird wave goodbye from the front door. As the door closes, your companion collapses on his hands and knees, blood oozing from his mouth. He pulls himself warily to his feet and groans. This cure can't come soon enough, coin slave. Really wish you'd stop calling me that. Eh, whatever. This doesn't help me, nor will it hurt me. Right, I'm just going to take a quick moment to heal up in camp. See if there's anything to trade for. Nope. Well, there is, but nothing worth trading for. I'll be honest, I expected this challenge to come in under the time limit. And no. But now you reap all that you have sown. Now death comes for you in a score of forms. But no. It actually lasted thanks to Mal's quest. Golden stairs give way to solid stone, and you find yourself face to face with the Black Knight. You are on a mountaintop, cloaked in silver fog. Now, if you'll notice, he has a very, very uh, familiar symbol on his chest. Iwa, Haro, and gar Yell materialize beside you and smile. You have pierced the veil, and so the Black Knight comes to defend his realm. Defeat him and free us, champion. Fate has provided the Black Knight with more protection. Not a big deal. Also not a big deal. Nate has also cursed your endeavor. Yeah, but that only happens when I gain a curse, this one not included. Or this one is included. No matter, I've got plenty of rings to give up that I don't need. Nate has chosen pieces for both sides of the board. We shall see if you can overcome the obstacles placed before you. For all our sakes, I hope you are victorious. I will be. All right, just going to take out the Musketeers and the Anarchists first, then focus on the Black Knight. Not that he's going to make it easy for me, or that he should. Black Knight, the protector of prisoners being held beyond this mortal realm. Mighty foe and mighty armor that must be bashed off before you can be killed. You haven't made this easy for us. What do you mean, I haven't made this easy for us? Or are you stalking to the Black Knight? Not him, Musketeer. Fortunately, he's got double attacks. Ow, ow. Come on, I've come this far to succeed. I can't die now.
unfortunately, he's not technically counted as an empire because he's the Black Knight. But, oh well. And with that, the Black Knight falls, and the fates are saved. Silver clouds disperse around you as the Black Knight's body falls lifelessly to the floor. Gariel greets you warmly. You have freed us from a prison we thought eternal. Our gratitude shall be endless, warrior of fate. I can see why he's watching you, Awa says with a smile. While he is watching you, he shall be plotting our revenge. The three siblings disappear in a cloud of gray and gold. Overcome with exhaustion, you look around for a comfortable place to make camp. You are surprised to see a bedroll already laid out beside a campfire, burning low. You gaze up at the night sky briefly before falling into a deep and untroubled sleep. Or rescuing the fate. begins to turn in your favor. We knew that because you are here. We gain. Asgar's reckoning. Winds return. Hand of fate. Kubar's, Kubarak's gains. Our supplies have gained the buckler. And for freeing the watchers of the Wii, we also gained Grimalkin, Fate's dealings, Cunning Man, and Purgatory. For proving yourself a worthy opponent to Fate, we gain Forgotten Dreams. Restoring the Maiden to her true form. We unlocked the Maiden. We're following the Goblin all the way to Goblin Town, we have unlocked the Goblin Town. And for making the Mad Men's Orphanage livable for orphans, we gain the Cure. Final card Apocalypse's Companion Quest. With that, we have rescued we the toward the end of our tale, and here true magic begins. The gates have been opened, and now we must merely pass through them. As I was saying, with that, we have rescued the fates from their eternal prison. But we have come to an end for this episode. If you like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.